Joining us now, uh, Joel Patterson, who is a workplace uh, expert on uh, how to negotiate good pay, pay increases uh, where you are if you don't want to leave to another job, and getting better benefits. Good morning, Joel. Welcome back in. Good morning, JT. Always good to be here. So uh, as opposed to just crawling across your boss's floor on the carpet and crying and begging, uh, what are some tips on things you can do and should do when negotiating and some things that we'll talk about that uh, you should avoid when trying to get more pay and better benefits? Yeah, the, the, the great thing is that there's not really been a better time for people to to look around, see what else is available to them, have a little bit of a leverage when they go into these conversations. Uh, the, the tight labor market has really driven a lot of that. But when, you're, when, you're, when you make that decision and you're ready to go, you got to understand that the how is every bit as important as the what. So make sure that you are prepared when you go into this conversation. Go into it confident, not cocky. Make sure that you understand what you have done for the organization over the last year or, or since your last performance review. Uh, do some research on, on online about you know whether or not you are paid appropriately for the position and the role that you're in, and go in there uh, with with the right attitude. I mean, difference in these things. Most bosses that I know, they want to get uh, more money for their employees. They need to be able to make the case just like you do. Right. So make it easy for them and uh, and go in there with some good data. You know, going in prepared uh, obviously makes sense. You don't want to just walk in and go, well, I think I've done a pretty good job. So, you know, I, I kind of like a 10% raise. I mean, you know, well, you know, you, you've seen me work. You know what I'm doing. I, I think you're right. You got to go in prepared and, and more, I guess, the better, right? And write this stuff down, maybe leave a, a copy of the bullet points uh, with the boss on the way out the door. And uh, is it best to, you know, actually write things down and go through the list with them? I think you got to do something that's unique. I think that's what's important. So if you've ever, like, when you say something to somebody and, and, and maybe it's a, a joke or something, and they do kind of a double take and they look at you and they're surprised because they because you said something unique, that creates a, a lasting impression on people, and that's what you're going for. Mm -hmm. So whether that is leaving a PowerPoint behind or some kind of document behind or just surprise them a little bit in a good way, and, and I think you'd be surprised. Even little things make quite a difference when you come in and you do something that's not expected for you, of you to do. Now, the other thing that you want to make sure you don't do is you don't want to walk in there and say, hey, I've been here this long and I deserve it. Or I need more money because I can't pay my rent. Those are the kind of things that, you, that you're going to lose credibility as soon as you go in there because that is not their issue. You need to make this about what you've done for the organization, how you've grown in your role, and just prove to them with confidence that you deserve this. Right, right. And maybe the progress you've made as far as, you know, understanding and learning other tasks since you began, uh, helping others out in the office or the workplace, whatever you're doing. Uh, and I, I like the fact that, uh, you know, do some research, like you mentioned at the beginning there, Joel, on, all right, what does the boss, you know, want from me? And have I expect, you know, met his expectations uh, in, in where he wants me to go and, and what I'm delivering to this company. If A, B, C are important to him as far as, you know, going to his boss on what his employees are doing, have I, you know, accomplished that? I, I think most people don't realize that they want, like you said, they, they, they want to get you the raise. They want, they want you to be a good employee. So show them what you've done for your boss and how you can you know, what, what are you bringing to the table? Are you helping me generate revenues? Are you helping me to uh, grow our company? Are you helping teams uh, in, in the company or in the workforce that we work together with do better? Uh, attitude and things like that. So, yeah, the bullet points. Other things that you don't want to do, uh, Joel, as you mentioned, uh, don't complain about, you know, me, 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 I need, 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 because I can't, can't, can't. Um, what else turns bosses off when you come into the uh, interviews? I mean, th that's the biggest thing. You know, keep the emotion to a minimum. A lot of times people get really worked up before they go into these conversations. And just, again, recognize that your boss is just somebody sitting across the table from you, uh, just like you are, and probably has been in the same situation with somebody else. So how do you think they would have gone through it? Uh, if, you, if, you, if it's not just about money, the other thing that I would say these days that you can really go in there and discuss is something like hours or the days of the week that you work, or maybe, maybe you'd rather work evening shifts you know, it's always going to be specific to the industry and the type of organization, but there are a lot of ways to, to make your life better or more uh, content that doesn't involve cash. Now, a lot of, most, most right. of the time when people leave because of money, 
But just keep in mind that there are other things that you can use that might better better your career or push you further uh, in the organization than, than just an increase in salary. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. A lot of times the budgets are set and bosses don't have a lot of leeway when it comes to handing out raises, especially coming out of the pandemic and trying to get back on track with uh, where they were pre-pandemic you know, financially for the company. So they're like, look, you know, maybe you come in and offer or, or suggest in addition or in place of a raise, maybe you can get me uh, some more vacation time or maybe uh, you can help me with uh, the rom remote workplace at home that uh, worked out pretty well during the pandemic. Uh, what about child care opportunities? Uh, yeah, other things, does that s you sometimes help as well? All of those are great ideas, child care specifically, especially as we go into the summer. Uh, a lot of organizations are, are bringing in somebody to make it easier for parents to bring in their kid. Maybe they only want to work for half a day in the office or something, or they've got a meeting uh, so that they've got somewhere to go just to make it simple. Uh, employers right now are looking for any way to differentiate themselves from other competition. So uh, you can help them by coming up with unique ideas on ways to compensate you. Yeah. you know, another thing that's out there that's really getting some, tra uh, some traction is four-day work week. We'll see if it goes anywhere, but there's a lot of people talking about it. And, and, and COVID really is what allowed people to say, hey, maybe this will work now. Yeah, yeah. Work-life balance makes a lot of sense for a lot of people and can be accommodated quicker than just giving you a big, fat raise. But going in prepared, the big one there. Joel Patterson, thank you so much.